Hello everyone, this is Rajkumar Singh. I welcome you back into this uh, lecture series on quantum mechanics. In this lecture, we will talk about time-dependent perturbation theory. This is the part 2 of lecture. In the first part, we have dealt in detail about the general theory of time-dependent perturbation theory. In this uh, lecture, we will talk about constant perturbation as an application to the general theory. So there is an advisory before attending this lecture, please go through my previous lecture on the general theory of time dependent perturbation theory part 1, whose link appears at the top right corner of this lecture slide, where you will find derivations that we are using in this lecture. So please, before going through this lecture, you should go through the lecture known as the part 1 of this series. We are taken this expression cnt exponential minus ent by h cross from the part 1 of the lecture and this is the probability amplitude for the state ket psi t to exist in the ion state n of h naught. Therefore, the probability for the state to have grown from initial state k to a state n at a time t which is known as transition probability is given by p k to n equal to modulus square of this amplitude c n t exponential within bracket we have minus i e n t by h cross and when we solve this this is equal to modulus square of c n t because from the exponential term and its complex conjugate they cancel out to the value 1. Now, we will take up the case of constant perturbation and this will finally lead us to Fermi golden rule. We have an expression for C1t, this is equal to integral 0 to t i h inverse exponential i e n minus e k t by h cross and this matrix element n h dash k dt. This is equation 16 of our lecture in the part 1 of this series. Now when perturbation is constant in time, then the matrix element n h dash k in equation 16 above does not involve time and we have c n 1 t equal to i h cross inverse h dash n k. This is the matrix element for this n h dash k. Now since it is not function of time, it has come out of the integral and an integral 0 to t exponential term dt. This upon solving gives c in 1 t equals to this 1 by i h cross this exponential term besides the time part and this h dash n k and then exponential this part limit 0 to t. So when we use the limit we get this expression for c n 1 t in this sequence and after a little bit of reshuffling we get this expression. We have just uh, used this minus sign within the bracket and we have 1 minus exponential term here. This is equation 17. Now to the first order we have transition probability p k to n equal to modulus c n t square. Now we have c n t equal to c n naught t plus c n 1 t modulus square and since this term is 0, so we are left with c n 1 t modulus square. So when we use the expression for c n 1 t from here uh, equation 17, we have for probability transition p k to n, this is equal to modulus square of c n 1 t and this is the expression for c n n1t from equation 17. When we solve this, we get h n dash k modulus square and from this it is of the time type 1 minus exponential i theta and when we take the square of this, we will have one term as 1 minus exponential i theta and the second term will be 1 minus exponential minus i theta. So when we do term by term multiplication and 
a little bit of arrangement we have this expression from there and we want to express it in terms of sine theta so it turns out to be in this form now in the next slide we we'll see using the property of delta function the previous expression for transition probability p k to n this turns out to be 2 pi by h cross modulus square of h n k dash and the delta function e n minus e k into t so using the property of delta function and rearranging the expression in the previous slide we get an expression for transition probability p k to n equals to 2 pi by h cross modulus square of h dash n k delta function of e n minus e k into t so from here we observe that the transition probability grows linearly with time the delta function becomes 1 for e n equal to e k and it is 0 otherwise so this transition probability has meaning only between two states of equal energy that means a constant perturbation simply causes energy conserving transition and it neither supplies energy to the system nor it removes energy from the system and the transition probability is zero between the two states where the energy of the two levels are not same so now let us move on to transition to continuum by transition to continuum we mean that the rates of transition to one or a group of final states belonging to energy i n values distributed around e n in a small interval delta e n that means we have several layers centered around a given layer at very small energy difference this is known as continuum the total transition rate is then given by sum of rates of transition from the given initial state to all the available states of the continuum so if rho e n be the density of states that is the number of states per unit interval of energy then rho e n d n is the number of states between the energy e n and e n plus d n therefore total transition rate this is w n k equal to integral of p k to n per unit time t into the number of states rho e n delta e n or d e n so writing the expression for p k to n so we have here this is the expression for p k to n divided by t later on this t and this t cancel out and then rho e n d e n so this is equal to integral 2 pi by h cross h dash n k square delta function e n minus e k rho e n d e n now we use the expression for delta function when the, it becomes 1 that is for when e n equal to e k and this is the allowed transition under constant perturbation so when e n equal to e k this delta function becomes 1 and we are left with as total transition rate w n k equal to 2 pi by h cross modulus square of h dash n k rho e n this relation is known as fermi golden rule of quantum mechanical calculation thus we have seen in case of constant perturbation the only allowed transitions are those between those two levels which have same energy when the two levels have different energy then constant perturbation does not allow any transition and this uh, transition under the effect of constant perturbation does not allow any absorption or emission of energy it simply 
observes energy conservation from one state to the other state which is of same energy as the originating states. This we come to an end of our discussion on constant perturbation. This was the part 2 lecture for time dependent perturbation theory. Now in our next lecture that will be part 3 and the final lecture of this series we will discuss about harmonic perturbation and we will see how it is different from the case of constant perturbation. Thank you so much.